what is going on today we are going to talk about how to plumb a pressure washing trailer what is going on so I've got a lot of questions about how we plumb up our trailers from the water supply to the pressure hose to the unloaders to everything involved in the plumbing of a pressure washing trailer so let's get into it there are lots of variations and lots of folks do it differently but this is how we do it it works for us and has for about 20 years to keep it as simple as possible, we're gonna start with the water supply or the faucet on the house or building you're connecting to and work our way all the way through the system until the water is pressurized and coming out of your wand and making you money. So we are going to start with the water supply line. It can be any kind of hose from a regular old garden hose like you see here to the fancier, more expensive stuff like a Flexzilla. Water pressure and flow varies from house to house and building to building. It's better to have a wide diameter hose which allows more flow into your tank. There's nothing worse than running out of water. We always keep an extra couple hundred of feet of supply hose in the rare cases where we're outrunning our water supply. This usually happens on large surface cleaning jobs, so we'll pull out the extra hose, find a water bib, and double fill the water tank. The water supply hose is on a hose reel. A side note, always make sure all your connections are tight and not leaking, your O-rings are in good shape. The environment that we work in already is harsh on trailers, hose reels, and anything metal. So anything you can do to help eliminate excess water is a good idea to help prolong the life of all your equipment. From the water supply hose, we go directly into the water tank. You can drop it right in the top or you can get a bulkhead fitting like we did, a barb, and secure it with a hose clamp. We've taken it a step further and attached to the bulkhead fitting a Hudson float valve. These are great and we do this once again to help prevent overflow from the tank. These float valves operate just like your toilet. When the water level rises in your tank, the water pushes the float up and it shuts off the valve. As you're working and your pressure washer is pulling water from the tank, the valve opens and allows more water to flow into the tank. It will never overflow, which is good. So now we have to get the water from our tank to the pressure washer. And we do that with another bulkhead fitting at the bottom of the water tank. Again, flow is very important and you don't want to starve your machine of water. So it's important to have the correct diameter hose feeding your machine. We run all eight gallon per minute machines. So we're using one inch water line. You can use one inch for anything bigger than five gallons per minute and three quarter inch for anything smaller than that. When you are running your lines, you wanna try and make a straight shot, avoiding any sharp turns or connections if possible to help the flow of water stay as unrestricted as possible. That isn't always possible, but it's a good idea and really does help. So it goes from the tank to the pump inlet. The pump does its job, it pressurizes the water, and then it goes from the pump through an unloader and out the end of your gun. The high pressure side of the pump is connected to our hose reel with a high pressure jumper hose and then of course the high pressure hose from the hose reel to the wand. There are two other hoses. One is the chemical line from the chemical injector. We like to keep that near the hose reel which is closer to the tanks. These are not plumbed directly to the tank. We just drop them in the chemical when needed and then into the water tank when we are rinsing. This also clears out the lines and the chemical injector which will make it last longer. Always run fresh water through your chemical injector at the end of the day. The last is the bypass hose. When you're not pulling the trigger on the gun, the bypass valve on the unloader opens up and releases the pressurized water. The water has to go somewhere, so we bypass it into the tank. This helps to cool the water down and prolong the life of your pump. You can bypass it directly back into the pump, but I prefer to let it go to a tank. All right, so while we're at it, I'm gonna show y'all how we plumb up our soft wash system. A 12 volt soft wash system is a lot easier to plumb than a pressure washer, even with a metering valve. The suction hose goes from the pump through the box and directly into the top of the metering valve. From there, you have three valves, each having a distinct purpose. The far right hose runs directly to our water tank and connects with a bulkhead fitting that has a tube attached to it that sits about six inches from the bottom of the tank, sucking in the fresh water. The middle valve has a small tube that goes to our soap tank where we keep our surfactants and soaps. The third valve has a tube connected to it, but it is not plumbed to a tank. 
It has a PVC tube that it runs through and that keeps the hose straight and down into the liquid. It also has a mesh filter on the end and this serves as our SH line. The reason it's not plumbed directly to the SH tank is because we wanna be able to pull it out after the job is complete. Drop it in the water tank and flush the hoses, pump and gun with fresh water. So we go back in and follow the outlet side of the pump, which feeds through the bottom of the box and goes over to the soft wash hose reel, feeding that with our solution coming through the metering valve and the pump. And that is it. All right, guys. Well, you saw how we plumbed up our soft wash system and our pressure washers. Hopefully that helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, but most importantly, have a great day.